Hi, welcome to a2zknowledge.com. Today we are going to discuss about Spark RDD. So before we get into Spark RDD, we just wanted to discuss few things and then we can go for what is RDD. Okay, so MPP. Okay, what is MPP? Massive Parallel Processing Technologies. What is What are all the Massive Parallel Processing Technology you are aware of? Yes, you know Spark is an MPP, MPP technology. In Hadoop, MapReduce is an MPP technology. We have Strom, Flink, all these big data technologies are MPP. That means doing the processing in parallel. So for that first what you have to do is you have to first distribute the data and then only your technology can able to do the parallel processing. Now I'm going to explain you some scenario here. I'm having uh, four nodes. Okay, it's a Linux. It's a Linux machine. Okay, and on top of this Linux, I'm installing Spark, and then uh, I'm going to explain you some concept, and finally I'll I will explain you RDD so that you will understand. And here I'm not installing HDFS, and Hadoop is not installed. I'm just going to explain this RDD only with Spark. Okay, now uh, I have a file in this first mission input file, so which I'm going to use for the processing and this file size is 1 GB. Now in the very first line of my Spark code, I'll be writing a line to read the file. So what Spark will do? It will read this 1 GB file and then it will create partitions, a logical partitions. Okay, imagine this 1 GB file is split into three partitions. The partition is based on the partition logic what we use in the Spark. Okay, now imagine the Spark is reading this 1 GB file and then splitting into three partitions. And these three partitions will be get distributed across these four nodes. It's not mandatory. It has to be get distributed for all these four nodes. It could be three or even in the two nodes the three blocks can be get distributed and I am not using HDFS I am just speaking only with Spark okay now imagine this three blocks are getting distributed in three nodes and very importantly they are getting stored in memory not in uh, disk or we are not using HDFS it's just stored in the memory it, it, it get distributed in memory and it get uh, stored in the memory now you are writing a job, a Spark job, and these job, uh, the Spark job will create tasks, and these uh, tasks will be get running on these three. So how many tasks I'm having? It's based on how many input blocks I have. Okay. Now it's three, right? So I have already uploaded the Spark architecture video and what is Spark video, uh, uh, the kind of introduction. It's all there in my playlist, and I have given my playlist link in the description box of this video. Fine. So uh, the architecture is not required for you to uh, see, I means to understand the RDD, but still I recommend you to watch that and then you can watch this RDD. Even without that, you can still understand this video. Okay. Now uh, the job uh, you are writing. Now in Spark, what you can do, you can write n number of transformations on top of the block. Okay, you are writing first transformation and the output of first transformation you can do, uh, you can give it as an input for the second transformation and then the output of second transformation you can give it to third and so on so you can do. And finally you can store the output. Okay, and uh, Spark records all these transformations whatever you are performing on the input data set that we call it as data lineage. So it maintains the lineage. So which transformation happened before this and which trans like a history it maintains all the history it, it knows the lineage. So the job itself holds the metadata of all these lineages transformation lineages. Okay, and these lineages are maintained uh, uh, something called DAG direct acyclic graph. It's a graph algorithm which is used to maintain the lineage and this DAG is a separate topic we can discuss later point of time okay now um, uh, so this lineage so why you started explaining this lineage you may ask me this question but I will tell you later now you are doing a first transformation uh, the transformation is uh, so imagine this b0 is a file in the file I have a number called 2 that's an input okay so I am reading the number 2 and I'm, I have to do plus 1 so this plus one is my transformation okay so in all the file i'm having some number and i have to do plus one so imagine in b1 i have a number three i have to do plus one in b2 i have a number like uh, five i have to do plus one okay now output two plus one three and then three plus one four and then five plus one six so this is the first transformation now again this three four six are your output and this output will be get stored in the memory okay so the default the transformation output will be get stored in the memory okay so this this again a file and this will be get partitioned and this will be get distributed in the memory the output also creates a partition and then that will be again distributed now with this you can start your second transformation the second transformation is i have to do plus two with all the uh, output of uh, the previous output 
okay so that means here it is 6 plus 2 here it is 4 plus 2 and here it is 3 plus 2 and output 5 6 and then 8 so second transformation is completed so so and so you can do it now imagine uh, for example I, I got an issue okay so I got an issue uh, like this 4 right the output of the first transformation is gone so that i couldn't start my second transformation okay the output is gone so it, it's it's lost due to some memory corruption or something happened in my cluster now how spark will uh, handle this so whether spark since this particular output is gone this task will be failed or, or this since this task has failed my entire job that is other running task also will be failed so this is a question you may ask me so spark will not fail any of your jobs because of one task failure because for a uh, spark and able to uh, tolerate the fault okay we call it we call it as fault tolerance okay so how spark is tolerating the fault i will tell you so since uh, spark maintains the lineage if this particular output is gone it will try to find out what was the previous transformation because it maintains the lineage so it find out this is the transformation so it will recompute this recompute means it will rerun the task once again so you will get the output again and then it will give the output to the second transformation so that you will not uh, get any job failure due to a particular task got failed it will be get recomputed automatically okay so here fault tolerant is handled now the next thing is people used to ask me how about replication because in uh, hdfs and map reduce and all we have replication right so how about the replication here okay so spark also supports replication in storing the output of a transformation and we call uh, that as persist so persist is, 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 is again a different topic I will explain you. Persist means uh, where to store the output of each transformation and that is called persist. We have to persist somewhere. You have some types in uh, like you have some persist type in which you can decide whether you can store your output of a transformation in a memory or in disk or both memory and disk. So something like that you have some types. I will explain you in a separate topic. So in this persist type there is a, a type called memory underscore only underscore underscore 2 that means your output will be get stored as two copies okay so here this for imagine uh, with this first transformation I'm invoking this persist method memory only underscore 2 and that means the output 4 will be get copied one more time somewhere in another machine for example here so that means if this 4 is lost instead of recomputing it will take this replica and then it will continue the second uh, transformation so that the recomputation time is saved here okay so uh, but again it's completely depends on the use case whether to you have the replication or not you have to decide because the replicated data also gets stored in the memory memory is very important memory is something ram right so uh, in my use case right so far i haven't used to this replication uh, in the memory so uh, because the memory is very important so other jobs will not should not be get impacted due to this replication stuff so uh, the, even the recomputer is very faster uh, so i don't don't want to go for replicas so that is my use case and my performance stuff based on my infrastructure but but again it's it depends on your case and your infrastructure so you have to decide this so all these concept what we have seen is rdd okay and finally i'm coming to the point r d d resilient distributed data set i repeat resilient distributed data set last d data set data set means the input data file it could be csv or json or avro whatever the data set right so that is called d d for data set and the second d distributed and that means your data will be created in partition and then that will be get distributed right so that is d and r is very important fault tolerant how spark is tolerating the fault so spark is using data lineage with dag so data lineage with DAG and then it is identifying the previous transformation and it is recomputing it. That means uh, the DAG. So this data lineage we understood, right? But DAG is something I will explain you in my upcoming uh, videos. So fault tolerant. So uh, whatever you do, any transformations that you do in Spark, we call it as RDD. If you take map as a transformation, it's an RDD. Filter is a transformation, it's an RDD. Each and every transformation that you use in Spark has the concept of this RDD. Okay, similar to RDD, we have two more things in Spark called data frame and then 
there is one more called a data set it's like a next version so data frame is next version of rdd and data set is next version of data frame but underlying all these three uh, the main thing all these three um, uh, different apis what it is doing is rdd only all these three internally it's an rdd but it's just an upgraded version data frame and data set so we can see these data frame and data set also in my upcoming video and the difference between these three also we can see but underlying all these three what it will do is the concept what i have explained you and all your uh, syntaxes will change so in rdd the syntax will little bit different from data frame and that is different from data set but underlying concept is again rdd for all the transformations and if you take rdd the the operations of rdd splits into two called a transformation and then action okay so uh, if you use rdd to write a program and then you will be using this transformation and action and i will explain you what is these two things in my upcoming video so still we have to see what is dag and we have to see the persist of, uh, types and then transformation and action and also i will explain you the futures of rdd the advantages and futures of rdd and the difference between rdd data frame and data set and what is our data frame and data set so it's it's a complete uh, gonna be a spark series playlist a video series so you can find that link in the description box of this video where you can find all the uh, spark videos okay so thanks for watching a 2 zknowledgecom if you really like this video please do subscribe my channel and forward this to your friends and colleagues and we do tech videos in two languages english and tamil and uh, and i have given my instagram and linkedin url in the description bo box please do follow me thanks for watching a 2 zknowledgecom